Once at shore, the much needed repairs started with the tilting of the ship to one side with proper tugging. The four months continuously on sea had created mayhem for ship, and their hulls were layered and covered with seaweeds, barnacles, snails, sigworms, resulting in reduced speed. Therefore, Karini started with scrubbing, cleaning, and then sealing the caps with the old ropes and caulking irons. The same operation was done on the other side. After this, the ships were towed out from sea on key. The blast filled with the rotten water, cockroaches, rats, and rubbish was clear, and the fresh water was filled in blast. The decks were scrubbed, sails were repaired, and the worn ropes replaced with the new one. In the meantime, one team gathered wood as well as fresh water from a nearby stream. Gamma, with his astrolabe, took the accurate reading of the altitude. During the stay, they had some interaction with the primitive local tribes with some mixed incidences, which ended up in a short skirmishes with them injuring the leg of Gamma with an arrow. In another incident, Paulo the Gamma luckily saved his life while hunting young whales at shore when it flipped and almost capsized him with his bow. On November 16th, they went back to the sea and sailed toward south and then southeast and had the first glimpses of the glowing mighty tabletop mountain of the Cape of Good Hope. But it was tricky to pass the cape as the coastal wind hauled them towards land each time the tribe. It took four days to battle out with the sea to double the cape, which was done on 22nd November, which was celebrated with bombardment and thanking God for a safe journey. November 25th, after three days of coastal sailing, the ships entered the enormous Mossel's Bay and anchored off the beach passing a little island near the shore full of seals. Due to earlier incident at St. Helena, the local tribesmen were dealt with caution. Also in the past, Diaz had a bad incident with a local here. Initially things went well and a fat ox was bartered. But later on trouble started with tribesmen for drinking water, which was dealt firmly with the show of strength and enough water and wood was replenished. Due to the long voyage, the ships were running low with the supplies, therefore the materials of the store ship was transferred to the other three ships. And after cannibalizing it for spare parts and woods, the stripped hull of the store ship was set on fire, which is moldered more than a week as a warning sign to the locals. Before leaving, some sailors rode to Seal Island to have a close look where beside thousands and thousands of sail, they encountered the strange bird that is the Cape Penguin for the first time. On December 7th, after erecting a padrose, that is the stone pillar with cross, the little fleet set sail. However, locals smashed the pillar to the ground in full view of the departing sea. As they left the bay, the wind dropped and the sails sagged. and the next day, that is on December 8th, they faced a horrifying great storm at night and lost sight of Barrio. In pitch dark, piercing cold waves battered the ship and the deck was filled with freezing water. It became difficult to control the ship and all several thought for the last day. Finally, it calmed down and dispersed ship came together in the lightened sky and moved to the land side from the deep sea where the storm carried them away. On December 16, they passed by the mouth of the river where Diaz's mutinous crew forced him to turn back. The Gama ships now entered the area where no European ventured. This was years of questing, decades of dream, and centuries of hard work that the first Europeans were sailing into the most short Indian ocean. On the 25th December, the little armada passed the area they named Nata for the Christmas day. The ships were running low on water, therefore, on 11th January, they anchored off near a small river where they found tall Negroes, both men and women, very friendly and call it the land of good people. After five days of stay and some replenishment of water, the little fleet again ventured out to sea when the favorable wind noticed. After nine days of sail, the ship reached the mouth of a much larger river near Kilman. Gama decided to reconnaissance the water. 
encountered the friendly African tribes, who chief offered them fresh water and allowed them to stay without trouble. Gama and his men stayed 32 days on the river bank. It was much needed rest for the Gama men. The carrying of all sheep as well as repairing of the mast of Sao Rafi were also carried out. The dreaded scurvy created havoc on men due to seven months on ship at sea. Many of the crew were seriously ill. There was no doctor in team and around 30 men died. Eventually, after regaining some strength, on February 24, the fleet moved forward in the open sea again and moved toward the northeast. Stopping at night, sailing in the day, they observed and noted the details on the way. The waters of Indian Ocean, into which Vasco was now entering, had been the sea trade routes of Arab countries for a long time and the Portuguese were going to have a difficult time. On March 1, close to the shore, a larger group of island appeared. They were in Mozambique, with a developed port system and two smaller islands guarding the approach from the sea. After the musical reception and Kohelo visit to the town, the local Sultan himself came to the port to have a look at the giant ship. He first mistook them as a Turk and greeted them well. But afterwards, knowing their Christian identity and finding their low head goods, the intrigue to capture them with their ship started. The Christian and Muslims came face to face and their relationship turned from jovial to hostile. Initially, on the Gama's request, they provided two pilots for navigation to India, but later they proved to be Muslim spies and tried to get them trapped in their schemes. When Sultan forces tried to attack, the Portuguese flotilla retreated quickly to the sea, but the weather was not favorable there. Holding back somehow for a week, they again approached the harbor for the much needed drinking water, which was at dangerously low level. Seeing a stiff resistance, they had to terrorize them with the bombardment of the coastal area and forcibly replenish the drinking water. On March 29th, with favorable wind, the little fleet moved north. On April 1st, they spotted Kilwa, but due to unfavorable wind, they were not able to dock and proceeded further on the information of a similar port city ahead, as given by the Muslim pilot, which they kept as a hostess from Mozambique. On April 7th, the fleet arrived off Mombasa, a much bigger port with lots of trading ships docked there. This was a big city and the Sultan of the city tried to lure them to dock into the port. But Gama crosses from the earlier incident at Mozambique, first sent some of his people to the town where they were shown the Christian quarters. The Sultan sold them all the spices and asked them to trade with them. But as usual, the matter between Christian and Muslim not materialized, and the relationship became sure again. Losing any hopes of getting a reliable pilot for India, on April 13th, Gama ordered the ships to sail. Since he is not getting any pilots on boats, he decided to capture some pilots from ongoing ships. On the way, they seized a boat where they captured 17 Muslims and elderly Arab with his young wife with some goods on board, but none of them were pilots. On April 15, they were in front of the port city Malinde, as identified by the captive Muslims, who also informed that they had seen Christian ships from India here and if they were allowed to go, then they would arrange their Christian pilots along with the water, foods and other provisions. Holding the young wife as hostess, Gama allowed the elderly man and others to the city. In the night, the elderly man arrived back with the Sultan's representative and the situation eased with the exchange of gifts and talking. But the Sultan also visited the Gama on Sip Pani and invited them to their palace, which Gama humbly denied as he said he is not authorized to leave the ship. Relationship further cemented when they provided them the, an experienced Gujarati pilot for India and all other provisions for the journey.
Malinde was in conflict with their neighbors and this was the only Muslim city on the African coast in cordial relation with the Christian which was going to last long. On 24th April, with the sound of trumpets, sails were set and the fleet left Malindi with the all flags flying. Five nights afterwards, the polar star reappeared on the horizon as the Gamma men once again crossed the equator. The trade scene Arabian Sea depended on the monsoon. In summer, the wind blows clockwise from Africa to India, bringing southwest monsoon to India. In winter, it blows opposite counterclockwise and northeast monsoon wind flows from India to Africa. For millennia, trades in Arabian Sea were flourishing on the arms of these monsoon winds. In summer, ships from Arabs land with the goods go to Indian coast and in winter, the spices, precious stones, fabric, etc are transported back to Arab lands for a further export to Europe. Fortunately, Gama was at the right moment there and within 23 days with the season pilot provided in Malindi crossed the Indian Ocean. On May 18th, Lookout sighted the much sought land of India. They anchored near a town named Kapar, which the pilot mistook as Kalikar. On 20th May, the fleet moved near Kalikar. The Gama sent his men to the city and they returned with two Tunisian merchants who understand Cassidians and Gionese languages. They were astonished to see them from Portugal, not from Venice, Cassidia or France. They said, lucky venture, plenty of rubies, plenty of emerald, thanks the God who brought you here. The entire queue stood with the wide open mouths with no word. 